distance to truth, and by my God, I can leap over a wall. This God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord proves true. He is a shield for all those who take refuge in him. For who is God but the Lord, and who is a rock except our God? This God is my strong refuge and has made my way blameless. He made my feet like the feet of a deer and set me secure on the heights. He trains my hands for war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. You have given me the shield of your salvation, and your gentleness made me great. This is the word of the Lord. Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you may be justified in your words and blameless in your judgment. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness, but the bones that you have broken rejoice. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your righteousness. text is from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, the 10th chapter. Now these things took place as an example for us, that we might not desire evil as they did. Do not be idolaters as some of them were, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did, and 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not put Christ to the test as some of them did, and were destroyed by serpents nor grumble as some of them did, and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now these things happened to them as an example, but they were written down for our instruction, on whom the end of the ages has come. Therefore let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed lest he fall. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability, but with the temptation he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 16th chapter. Jesus also said to the disciples, there was a rich man who had a manager and charges were brought to him that this man was wasting his possessions. And he called him and said to him, what is this that I hear about you? Turn in the account of your management, for you can no longer be manager. The manager said to himself, what shall I do since my master is taking the management away from me? I'm not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. I've decided what to do so that when I am removed from management, people may receive me into their houses. So summoning his master's debtors one by one, he said to the first, how much do you owe my master? He said, a hundred measures of oil. 
He said to him, take your bill and sit down quickly and write 50. And he said to another, and how much do you owe? He said, a hundred measures of wheat. He said to him, take your bill and write 80. The master commended the dishonest managed manager for his shrewdness. For the sons of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than the sons of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of unrighteous wealth, so that when it fails, they may receive you into eternal dwellings. One who is faithful in very little is also faithful in much. And one who is dishonest in very little is also dishonest in much. If then you have not been faithful in the unrighteous wealth, who will entrust to you the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in that which is another's, who will give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, O Christ. We now confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father We now sing hymn 730, What is the World to Me?
Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Dear friends in Christ, one thing is abundantly clear in our psalm and in our Old Testament reading today. Mercy replicates, or at least it's supposed to. More specifically, mercy from God replicates or leads to more mercy. In a reading from 2 Samuel, we learn that with the merciful, God reveals himself to be merciful. God pours his mercy into our hearts and in our lives, yes, into our families, so that hearts and lives overflow with mercy to those around us. This mercy that we receive and pass on is a wonderful and joyous thing. But if we refuse to let that mercy overflow to our neighbors, that flow of mercy that God pours into our lives will dry up. Christ our Lord indicates that his mercy is intended to replicate when he tells us how to pray in Matthew chapter 6. He teaches us to pray, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. He goes on to say, for if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. We don't earn forgiveness or mercy by forgiving, for Jesus is the one who earned our forgiveness on the cross. But there are consequences if we refuse to let his mercy produce more mercy. Jesus told the parable of the unmerciful servant who ended up having the mercy shown to him revoked and thrown into prison because of his refusal to allow that mercy to replicate. The Lord's already paid the debt for all sins. He uses the word debts in regard to sins for a reason. It's so that we understand the concept that there is a price for sin and the price was to be paid in full by our Savior. He's the one who did pay the entire price for our sins and for the price of our neighbor's sins when he died on the cross. The debts have all been paid for. Scripture says that we're all ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from our forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ. There is forgiveness for debts, for the debts of everyone, because of the blood that Jesus has shed for us all on the cross. Mercy, therefore, replicates. And it's a joyous and wonderful thing to see and experience. Dear friends, the context of our Old Testament reading is very important today. After the Lord had mercy on David and delivered him from the hand of all his enemies, including Saul and his son Absalom, it is then that David is inspired to write, With the merciful, you show yourself merciful. With the merciful, you reveal yourself to be merciful. David was merciful to Saul and merciful to Absalom, his enemies, on several occasions. David could have easily killed Saul, who was trying to kill David, but he didn't. David and his friend Abishai had snuck into the camp where Saul was sleeping, and, and they were standing right over him and could have killed Saul, and Saul would have deserved it, but they didn't. Abishai was wanting to end Saul's life right there because Saul was in the process of hunting David down to kill him. But David was merciful and kept Abishai from piercing David's enemy with that spear. David was also merciful to his son Absalom, ordering his men who were going out to fight a battle to deal gently with Absalom. Even though they were going out to fight a battle, going to war... David tells them to be gentle with his son. Absalom would be fighting against them, trying to kill them, trying to harm him. As he was merciful to Saul, he was merciful to Absalom. He showed kindness and pity even towards those who treated him like an enemy. And of course, this was all foreshadowing what our Lord and Savior Jesus would do. It was all God's plan all along. So after the Lord had delivered David from the hands of all of his enemies, he spoke to the Lord saying, With the merciful, you, receive, you reveal yourself to be merciful. David was not the first to be merciful. 
The Lord had promised David that he would be king and that the Lord would establish his kingdom, even though David was a mere shepherd boy and a sinner like, well, like each one of us. He did not deserve God's mercy or favor any more than you and I do. David was born a sinner like we all are. But God had mercy on him, and God has mercy on us as well. Long before David was born, God identified himself to Moses as a God who is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. So it is important for us to recognize who is merciful first. It wasn't David. It was rather God. So David sang, with the merciful, you reveal yourself to be merciful. David is not saying here that we earn mercy from God. No, but mercy does replicate. The Lord is merciful to us first, and in response to his mercy, we are merciful to others. God reveals his mercy through us. And David is a great example in how God's mercy is intended to lead to more mercy. Mercy does replicate takes place just as God intends. God pours his mercy into our undeserving hearts and into our undeserving lives so that our hearts and our lives actually overflow with mercy to those around us. And God reveals himself to be merciful. He reveals himself to be a, a merciful God as that happens in our lives. God is merciful, so we are merciful. His mercy does overflow. Mercy replicates just as God intends. God is not only merciful to us, but he is merciful to others through us. It is true that the mercy given to us would be rescinded if we refuse to let that mercy replicate. But God's mercy naturally recreates more mercy. As, as God's mercy has an effect on our lives and in our hearts as we begin to show mercy to those around us. God is the source of mercy. God is, God is not merciful to us because we have been merciful to others, and God is not a help and shield to us because we deserve it either. Really, quite the opposite. No one is pure and righteous and deserving of God's help. As it is written, none is righteous, no, not one. So David does not say that he is pure, but rather that he has been purified, in other words, forgiven. David admitted what we should all acknowledge. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin, and my mother conceived me. We are already sinful beings at the time of conception, even before birth. We are all born sinners, people who break God's commandments and in doing so rebel against the Almighty God. We are not worthy of his help and blessings, and yet he has mercy on us. And not only us, but also those around us, often he has mercy on them through us. We, as the body of Christ, show Christ to be merciful when we are merciful to our neighbors. God is the cause of mercy. More specifically, Jesus, true God and true man who died on our behalf and was raised for our justification is the cause or impetus for our mercy. We do receive mercy on account of what Jesus has done. And we receive it freely as a gift, not something that we earn by being merciful. When the Lord gives us such undeserved mercy, he intends mercy to replicate. And it does. If we refuse to let that mercy have an effect on our heart and replicate, then that mercy would be withdrawn. But God does not allow that to happen. He works in us both to will and work according to his good pleasure. He forgives us and pours his love into our hearts and our cups overflow. With a merciful, with us, God reveals himself to be a merciful God. For God pours so much kindness and grace into our lives that that kindness overflows to our neighbors so that just as God has given us undeserved kindness and favor, so also we, as his ambassadors, give mercy and kindness to the undeserved sinners around us. God is a shield for all those who take refuge in him. 
David did not say that God is a shield to those who deserve his protection, but rather that God is a shield for all those who take refuge in him. As David makes clear at the end of our reading, the protective shield of God's salvation is, is actually given, not earned. We learn that it is God's gentleness that made David great. In other words, it's God's lowliness, his condescension, his meekness in Christ's state of humiliation that caused David to be great and increase in favor. David gives God all the glory in our two readings in the Old Testament today, and so do we. For like David, God has shown mercy to all of us. Mercy does replicate. God answered David's prayer for mercy and answers our prayer for mercy as well. God has mercy on you. You are forgiven. God creates in you a right spirit and does not take his Holy Spirit from you. He restores to you today the joy of salvation. For he's had mercy on you and like David, you are forgiven. He has had mercy on you once again and, and upholds you with a free and willing spirit so that his mercy will replicate, so that you will teach transgressors his ways and sinners will return to God. God's mercy is poured out once again today and, and his mercy creates more mercy. He delivers you from guilt so that your tongue also will sing aloud of his righteousness just as we prayed in the psalm moments ago. And when those around you hear you singing God's praises, singing of his mercy, they too will take refuge in the shield of God's salvation. And as David assures us, he is a shield for all those who take refuge in him. God is merciful. And his mercy does replicate. And it is a joyous and wonderful thing to behold. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus and for life everlasting. Amen. Please rise for prayer if you are able. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Merciful Father, you show mercy to us poor sinners. Lead us to acknowledge your mercy with gratitude that in turn, we may be quick to show mercy to others. Give us a right understanding of our own weakness and frailty. Preserve us from pride and lead us instead to cling to Christ and his forgiveness. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, by your Holy Spirit, help us always to be good and faithful stewards of all that you so graciously provide. Give us a predisposition to share especially grant that we may generously sharing of the salvation that you provide through your Son. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, help your church on earth shine the glorious light of the gospel into all darkened hearts across the globe. Bless the work of missionaries and pastors everywhere that your people may serve as the salt that you have called us to be. We ask for your particular blessing upon Kim Boltman and her work in Germany. Reverend Jonah Barakowski and his work in Latin America and in the Caribbean, and Dr. Charles Courtright and his work in Eurasia. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Oh Lord, you save a humble people, but your eyes are on the haughty to bring them down. Give true wisdom and humility to the people of our nation, and especially to those who are in authority and govern our land. Give us peace and safeguard the freedom of Christians across the globe. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all who are homebound, especially Dorothy, Arlene, Miles, Anita, Janet, Laura, and Karen. Give them comfort in the knowledge that they are not alone, but that you will never leave them nor forsake them. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, bless our school and our efforts to prepare a new generation in the faith to serve you. Bless our teachers and their preparations for the coming school year. Lord, in your mercy. Please have mercy on those who are ill or in need of healing. Especially we pray for Julie and her family, Leah, Dorothy, Andy, Amy, Daryl, John, Kathy, Bonnie, Marie, Elroy, Kathy, Marjorie, Vivian, Kristen, Bruce, Peter, Ruth, Dick, Willard, Jerry, John and Marge, 
Jim, Alice, Dave, and Tom. Please bless them with strength and faith in their times of need. We ask you to bless the work of medical professionals they may serve as your instruments of healing. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We ask you to bless and keep those serving in the military, both here and abroad, especially Joshua, Lance, Tristan, Gabriel, Adam, Riley, Brandon, Jordan, Catherine, and Matthew. We ask your continued blessing on all emergency personnel that you would keep them safe and, and bless their work so that they may live, we may all live in peace and quietness. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Dear Lord, please look with compassion upon those who are suffering from hunger, homelessness, poverty, discrimination, reduced employment or unemployment. Have mercy, Lord, and take away their sufferings and move us all to be your instruments of mercy and grace to those around us. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the offering. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, ripe, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, 
giving him into death, that we might not die eternally. And because he has now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Have mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and made his cross a life giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. We implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. We now sing our closing hymn, hymn 632, O Jesus, Blessed Lord, to Thee.